have UCT up, please. UCT. Okay, so this is a really big team. Thank you, CUT. Um, and while we're waiting for um, CUT to join us, can I have the next group up as well, please, so that we can keep the kettle boiling? So I've got a big group, Jacqueline, I've got James, Stephen, Octavius, Nicole, Mark, um, Gialunka, hopefully I got that right, Gialunka, uh, Juarez, Buchle, Kim, Chris, Sally, Bryce, Obakeng, as well as Fernando, all involved in this brew, so that's really great. Okay, some interesting things about what you guys got up to. Seem to be a lot of crisis control, so we'll hear a bit more about that. They are happy to say that this is a series, this year was a series of unfortunate events. Oh, sorry for that. Multiple equipment failures, multiple, there's a very, very long list. Plus, Eshcom um, helped them. There was an electricity trip. Um, so, they ha yeah, they, they're going to show you some sticky stuff. Thanks, guys. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, a big thanks to Nicole for, for slightly underselling. I, I think that our beers this year are, are pretty good. Hopefully, uh, we unseat uh, CUT. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so uh, all of the, the team members have been run through, but uh, this is James, this is Jacqueline, this is Octavius, and I'm Stephen. Um, here's a picture of everyone. Um, so our, our brewery is uh, sort of modeled on a, like a, a full-scale SAB system, and it was donated to us by SAB in 2003. There's a uh, a, ma a, a, hot, a hot liquor tank, uh, uh, a mash tun, uh, a loader tun, a boiler, and uh, a, a cooling coil that's uh, powered by ice. Um, it's got many quirks, which I, I'm sure some of us will elaborate on in great detail. Um, Octavius. Yeah, Octavius has something to say about some of the things we, we learned this year. Uh, thank you, everyone, for making this day a success. So, of course, we came across uh, a lot of set, setbacks uh, regarding our process here. So, we experienced lots of uh, boil over and lots of lots of uh, mesh ten overflow. So including sometimes addition of wrong ingredients or forgetting to add them at all. And then our system here actually also, <laughs> our boys here, the boy here also gave us uh, lots of hard time in terms of breakdown. So I think we received him in 2006, uh, courtesy of the South African breweries, uh, I think it's Newlands in Cape Town. So I think it needs an upgrade now, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> the SAB people are here and they're here now. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, of course, sometimes we ran out of uh, the CO2. Then on the positive side of things, so uh, we actually managed to brew, to, to do two, two brews per category. And then so we have lots of beers in our fridges, so our kegs are full. <laughs> And then in terms of, uh, we also managed to, to, cultivate, uh, to cultivate a number of yeast. So we had uh, wild yeast. So we had uh, lots of options in terms of wild, wild yeast. And then we cultivated them from, I think, fruits, fruit peels, yeah. And then lastly, we also managed to get a tip of the iceberg from Antarctica. So actually our, <laughs> our goza was brewed from, yeah, the actual stuff, the real stuff. Yeah, then... All of the salt, all of the salt in the Goza came from Antarctic sea ice. Yeah, thanks, Steve, for that. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, guys. I'll now hand over to James to take you through the rest of the presentation. No, not, not quite the rest of the presentation, but uh, uh, quite a bit of it. Okay, so I'm going to go through the beers that we brewed, uh, except for the wild ale, which was the most complicated, of course, of all the beers, and Jacqueline will take over for that. So first of all, we brewed a lager, 
Uh, we brewed a, a Schwarz beer, called it Sirius Black, because I have a uh, small black dog, uh, and I called him Sirius because I'm a Harry Potter fan. So uh, that's, it's pretty simple. It's very sessionable, even though it's dark. Uh, it's 4.9% alcohol because we were given a limit of 5% alcohol. So we brewed it to just under the specification and we used uh, Saf, uh, Saf Lager W3470 for the yeast because it is the standard for all lagers. Then we move on to the IPA. So we were deciding, we, we made two IPAs. We first made an English IPA, which was quite tasty, but the New England IPA shone through. Uh, it is a complete juice bomb. So it's about 6.3% 6, 6 alcohol. We made sure that we adjusted the water chemistry. It's really important for a New England IPA because if you don't adjust the water chemistry, you get a thinner beer. You really want in a New England IPA to have that juiciness and have like a full mouthfeel. The claw, as Anton says. Uh, so we used Lullamond Verdant IPA. It gives a really nice ester of peaches, which complements the hops. And we used a lot of hops. So we bit it with Centennial, we used Mosaic and Citra in the Whirlpool. Then we used, uh, we did two hop additions, one during fermentation, and then another after fermentation was done for the dry hop. We, we used a total of, I think, over 300 grams or so of, of hops, which is quite a bit for a 40 liter batch. Uh, and I think it really does shine through, you get, huge amounts of juicy fruits, and uh, it's, I think it's very delicious. <laughs> uh, I think you can tell that I really like IPAs generally. <laughs> uh, so then, one of the stars of the show that we were trying to, to ferment was Argoza, because we had this iceberg that we needed to use, and there is a decent amount of salt content. So essentially, we, we kind of messed up. We didn't realize that we couldn't submit <laughs> A goza under the 27A uh, category because it, it wasn't actually listed. <laughs> so essentially, we had to try and crowbar it into another category, uh, 28B, uh, American Wild Ale, mixed fermentation sour. But luckily, we had used three different strains of yeast in the beer, so it does fit the category. It has a bit of wildness from the grapefruit peel yeast that we threw in at the end. Uh, we also bottle, uh, keg conditioned with. Uh, Feinbos honey, which gives it an extra bit of wildness. Uh, I think it's, it's really tasty. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it tomorrow. Okay, and then uh, the, the, our fourth beer, we made a summer beer. First of all, uh, other group members had a pretty bad idea to make this like smoked beer. It's called like a Pivo Groziski. Uh, it tasted like distilled rice smoke. It, it wasn't great. So I had to take over and we made a, a, a table saison. Uh, we added wheat, rye, and oats because when you have a low ABB beer, it often tastes watery. So if you add those, those sort of uh, adjuncts that have a lot of protein, it adds to the mouthfeel. And also, especially rye and a saison is really good because when you use a, a saison yeast, it gives off citrus as well as peppery flavors. And rye gives us really nice pepperiness. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoy it as well tomorrow. Uh, over to Jacqueline to talk about the African Wild Ale. Hi everyone. So our African Wild Ale, um, just specifics, our ABV. Um, okay, firstly, it's based on a Belgian pale ale. Um, so our ABV comes down to 5.8 about. Um, the yeast uh, for this specific one is wild yeast from banana peels, which is surprising. Uh, uh, we have a sorghum content of about above 50%. Uh, I got some yams from either Nigeria or Ghana. Uh, we chucked it in there. Uh, and that's the non-grain starch. Um, uh, some local honey uh, for our South African sugar content. Uh, uh, SAB pale malt. Um, and then we also roasted some of the pale malt to get just a bit of a biscuity. Uh, malt out of it, uh, then just the general southern promise and southern aroma hops. Um, and then for bottle conditioning, we went for uh, African way of bottle conditioning without CO2, so we did that with honey, and we actually tried multiple honeys um, and selected the best one out of that, uh, flavor-wise. So just for the African wild ale, 
it was a few phases to get to where we are at now and we're happy with. So phase one was to do a base ward, um, added some hops for the antimicrobial properties. Then we divided that into 30 possibilities, so we had 30 jars, and we exposed those 30 jars to anything we could think of that can contain yeast. Um, so then phase two was to smell and visually check it first, um, and there were some horrible things growing in some of those jars. Um, we also did some pH tests to just make sure there is some soundness um, to, to know that we are growing the right things. Um, and out of that, six candidates were selected, which we then did a DMA starter with. And uh, from there, we looked at how it fermented. Um, uh, from those, we did a small batch sorghum ale. Um, and then we had two final candidates. Uh, the one was a banana peel, and the other one was grapefruit skin. So the grapefruit was, it was such a quick uh, fermenter, it was done in two days, I think. It, it was just ridiculously quick. Um, the banana peel took a, took a bit longer, but the, the flavor out of profile out of that was just uh, so good. So we actually went with that one. Um, so yeah, that is our presentation and just a few acknowledgements. But yeah, thanks a lot.